Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another video review from Fanboys Forever. Fans of Jurassic Park have experienced an absolute wealth of excellent toys from Mattel in the past few years. Starting with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Mattel has truly proven that they're the king when it comes to Jurassic Park toys, something that I really didn't even think was possible after the glory days of Kenner. In no category is it more apparent than their recent Hammond collection. Of course, I'm a sucker for the three and three quarters scale, and it just seems like it's a scale that tends to be neglected these days. However, I'm so glad to see Jurassic Park stick with this scale because, well, it just makes economic sense, especially considering that you have to have humans that scale all right with dinosaurs. Previously, Mattel had kind of straddled the line between more of the adult market and kids market of three and three quarters figures with their Target exclusive Jurassic World Legacy line, which pretty much consisted of things from the first and second films in the three and three quarters scale. Those were always really, really good, but usually the dinosaurs were repaints of something else or were more kind of action feature based. But with the Hammond collection, Mattel is changing all of that and we are getting collector grade dinosaurs with premium paint jobs and super articulation for the very first time. The hot ticket for the whole line has been the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And after years of excellent T-Rex toys ever since Fallen Kingdom, We've seen customizers get a hold of those sculpts and paint them up to the max. But now Mattel has entered the fray with their very own premium paint version and a completely brand new sculpt. They've been hyping this one up for a while and I've really been looking forward to seeing this in person. So before we get too far in, I will tell you that I got this from Big Bad Toy Store and it was around $55. That's about the price point. However, she's selling out at a lot of places. So you definitely wanna keep your eyes peeled for availability. All right, let's go ahead and look at the box. You can see that we have the Hammond Collection box. This is the largest Hammond Collection packaging that we've seen so far in the line. It does follow right along with those other box designs that we've seen, making this really cool for anybody who's an inbox collector, but uh, <clears throat> we, we don't even consider that around here at Fanboys Forever. Uh, you can see the name right on the front. You can see the cool silhouette of John Hammond in the amber right there. Same for the side. On the back, you can see a really cool picture of the actual product. And what's really wild is usually these look so much better than the actual figure that you get. But just from what I've seen in the window, I think the paint job on the actual figure is actually more detailed than the paint job on this render back here. So good for them. Then over here, we have a cool picture from the first film when the T-Rex saves the day. Spoiler for a movie from 1993. If you're looking for Rexy, you can find her right here using this barcode, maybe if a Target employee is willing to help. And we have a really cool kind of like Photoshopped uh, lit render of the figure right here with the classic logo. And at the top, we have this cool little like control center kind of looking packaging. All right, let's go ahead and get her out of the box. And just so that you can see, uh, she's packaged like this to make sure that the tail can fit in and everything. So there's going to be just a little bit of assembly required. And here she is, the gigantic new Hammond Collection T-Rex. It is an experience seeing this thing in person. For one thing, it's really hard to impress upon someone, I think, just what an upgrade that this thing is compared to the previous T-Rexes that we've been getting. Before I do anything else with this review, I just want to show you this visual so that you can understand. Up to this point, probably the arguably the most screen accurate T-Rex that we had gotten was in the Target Jurassic Park Legacy set that featured the green and red Jeep. And it was this. Just let that sink in for, for just a moment. Just get that image in your head. Oh, there it is. Let's get right into the actual detail of this figure. Although I call her a figure, it's kind of difficult to just classify it as that because this feels more like a high quality like movie maquette or an articulated statue of some sort or a miniature. And it's just amazing to see this thing uh, lunging in action. There's no better place to start than with the amazing head. Let's get a close up and personal look. We'll just go side by side here. Um, you can see all of this intricate sculpt work. This is a completely brand new sculpt, as is obvious compared to uh, their kind of standard T-Rex fare that we saw just a second ago. And you can see that every little bump has been captured here. I don't know if perhaps maybe they worked with ILM like they usually do, 
to get their most detailed render of what they had in their system for Rexy and they just kind of went from there or if some of the computer sculptors at Mattel uh, were looking at the original Stan Winston maquette and they kind of did a little bit of their own interpretation of it I can't really say for sure what exactly this is but whatever it is it's as accurate as I think you can possibly get you can see all of this incredible bone structure here all of these little bumps throughout the skin which I think is probably the most impressive part of the head uh, just the premium feel and, and look of this it's almost like one of those super detailed schleich little miniatures that you see and you know those are very impressive looking only blown up to like huge proportions with super articulation that's probably an okay comparison I think to make it's not just about the sculpt but the subtlety of paintwork is really on a whole other level with this fade in here and uh, just the subtle color degradation going around how you transition which is accurate to the film from this lighter color to this darker color around the uh, teeth line here these spots uh, just little imperfections truly it's it's absolutely wild one of the coolest aspects is the way that they executed the eye here it's really hard for you to see it on camera but if i get the light just right to where you can see a little bit uh, there's sort of like a lens over the eye and as you turn the head do you see the effect you can actually see the eye follow you and i'll try to go kind of slow so you can see what i mean but that is not only amazing but it's fairly creepy as well it really brings it back for me being you know about five years old sitting in the theater uh, listening to my cousin scream as, I, as the T-Rex attacked the cars. It was an amazing experience. Uh, it's just incredible. Moving to the front, and it's a little harder to get a front view because it's a little awkward with a T-Rex figure, I suppose. You can see that you have that incredible detail just continuing all around. The other side is just as consistent with all of the dots and little paint intricacies all around the figure. Uh, it almost has a feel of being you know a hand-painted product and it probably is once again if we look closely we can see the same kind of effect happening with that eye as it subtly follows you there uh, it almost reminds me of the moment george lucas talked about seeing the original jurassic park and realizing cgi had come so far when they shine the flashlight in the t-rex's eye and you have the pupil kind of get smaller this is kind of a moment in toy design right <laughs> maybe not that substantial but it's still an amazing thing and uh, just seeing this in full light in a macro lens like this uh, it's easy to see all this detail but it's also easy to forget just how amazing this looks when you're not so close up on it you can see just getting a little bit of distance all of a sudden i mean it's practically uh, it's practically a still from the film i mean that is truly incredible so one of the coolest things is the inside of the mouth. Not only do you have the tongue here and the inside of like the gum line and the bottom of the mouth and the roof of the mouth up here, but you have these jaws over here on the side, which are made out of a very rubbery uh, kind of plastic. And you can see them bend back inwards as you close the jaw and you can hear the jaw ratcheting. That is truly an epic bit of design. I, I don't even know what to say about that, but I could spend all day on just the head. But let's go kind of over the back here. You can see the striping as we go down. This neck piece here is, of course, a uh, little trick that Mattel always uses practically with their T-Rexes. It hides so much of the articulation. It's just a soft rubber piece, and it works here especially well. And if you pose it just right, it, it really you know just blends right in like this. Other angles, it doesn't blend as well. You can see it's a little bit lighter than the back and the neck up here. So that's not as subtle maybe as it could be. But then again, I have this in really bright, you know, studio lighting with a macro lens. And so you know that it's going to look better just in regular photography. Moving on back, we can see that that striping just continues. Uh, with the tail here, you can see that there's a little bit of misalignment with some of the striping. It's the kind of thing you wouldn't notice unless you were up over it like this but you can see that there's some over here but it doesn't quite meet here uh, it just is a little bit of an imperfection don't have that problem down here but all of the sculpting is still just incredibly nice and on down to the bottom you can see there's such great subtlety in the way that the paint transitions do you see that 
that is just fantastic. It almost looks like natural lighting, but it's just uh, it's just so subtle. So that brings us to the little T-Rex arms here, which when we go over articulation, they're a pretty interesting point. You can see under the T-Rex's neck, and there's the stomach, and the legs are definitely very interesting. You can see over here on this side, you have all of those great little ridges, and it, just like the Stan Winston maquette, Moving on down, you can see that there's pretty good consistency with the paintwork being fairly dark in the front, just like that original maquette. And you can also see down here we have the giant T-Rex feet with the claws and everything. And those look terrific and are fully painted. Now they get lighter as you go around to the back, and that leads to all the subtle kind of transformation with the paint back there. And you can see the incredible bottoms of the feet. And <laughs> it's funny, this is such a collector's kind of item, but you have this this little goofy thing down here. But you know, they do that. That's kind of their facsimile for the old JP tattoo, and it's so much more subtle than that used to be. Uh, but it is funny that it's there, but I guess they need a way to tell you this ain't just any dinosaur. This is an official Jurassic Park dinosaur. They should have just put engine on the bottom, right? <laughs> uh, the one thing with mine, aside from a little bit of the misalignment up here, is on this side over here, you can see this is where the one little paint inconsistency comes in. You can see that you can tell it's paint right here where the wash has done something a little funny. It's kind of drained here, or isn't quite right here. That It's almost the kind of thing that you could probably go in, fix yourself, because you can see what the actual color of the plastic is. It's just this brown. So maybe you could kind of take a tiny little bit of acetone and uh, lighten that up right there but it's not something that actually bothers me very much. It's, uh, you could almost just say it was the rain or whatever uh, from the scene. Once she's in her element like this, I mean, it's undeniable. So one big part of this that I really wanna cover and make you aware of exactly what we're dealing with with this upgrade for the Hammond Collection is the articulation. It's really such an upgrade. Uh, you have familiar articulation that we've seen. Say for instance, you've got this neck kind of motion here. And like I said earlier, they've been using that rubber piece. You can bring the head up about that far. So it's plenty far enough, just like the film. You can bring it down really far too. Now, there's also this little section. It's kind of this floating chest section here. You can bring it down as well to help with that. Then using the legs, the T-Rex can go uh, practically all the way to the ground. So you can easily eat a Gennaro figure. <laughs> of course, we're going to be getting that uh, for the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive on Mattel Creation. So hopefully I can snag that. You can also go quite a bit from side to side utilizing all of those main pieces that I talked about. And they all kind of work in tandem to get a lot of rotation. And it's kind of hard to show you in my review station exactly how significant that is but it's pretty wild just how much range you can get. This part up here, in case you wanna know, it doesn't really have much independent movement because it really wouldn't make sense if the T-Rex could shift its front skull around independent of the back part of its skull. Uh, as wide as you can get the mouth open is like this. And as I shown you earlier, it's just these kind of rubber pieces. The tongue is on a hinge, so you can have the tongue go all the way up. Uh, it kind of irritates me when I see people do this with the tongue. I don't really like that. I think, yeah, you can have it out a little bit like that, maybe. I think that's good, but I think people go a little wild with that. I'd rather kind of, you know, of course that's not exactly right, but you know, just a little bit, I think is plenty. I think people overdo it. They make it like a snake or something. Uh, and then you have another ratchet point like that. And then another ratchet point to close the jaw. And I love those ratchets, they're so effective. And that jaw is completely locked, so I love that. Moving on to these arms, these are such an interesting part of this because they're wildly, wildly articulated. So you do have a hinge right here on the inside, which just fascinates me that you're able to take the arm and kind of flex them inward, almost as if it had tiny little butterfly joints in there. This was kind of hard to break loose, so just be careful. It can also rotate all the way around and then it does have a single jointed hinge right there. And then you can rotate it at that same point. Same with the wrists. There is a hinge there as well. And you can flex it about this far up and this far down. So you can get some really wild stuff with the little arms. You can give all sorts of different poses, just that added bit of personality. 
Here at the legs, you can actually see that not only can you rotate them around, uh, you can also have this go in and out a little bit right here at the hip. So if you want to rotate it, you can, and there's a little bit of a lock. You hear that, how it kind of did the ratchet a little. And this is, you know, as crazy as you could possibly go without the T-Rex seeming like it would like break its own leg. So you can just put it back. You can hear that just tiny little bit of a ratchet. It's not too extreme. And then you can bring it back like this. And of course, bring it back all the way. So it's not really inhibited in terms of what you can do that way. That's plenty, I think, for the T-Rex. Uh, it does feel very different with each side. The other leg doesn't really have much of a ratchet, uh, but it's plenty stiff enough with what you're doing to where it's not gonna be a problem, but it's really just the one leg has the stronger ratchet. But I've had no issue with Rexy uh, standing and having any kind of issue like falling or anything. See, I mean, you know, that was just live on camera. I didn't have to do any extra takes with that or anything. You're just gonna have to trust me. There's nothing, you know, it's, she's not leaning on anything. So I, I'm very satisfied with her stability, and I honestly thought that's something that might suffer here, but it really didn't. Rexy has a double-jointed knee, something that I didn't think I would ever get to say in my action figure reviewing career. That is so cool. I mean, she's as athletic as I'll get out. Look at that. Uh, you know, now you know why Ian Malcolm is saying must go faster. Objects may be closer than they appear. All right, but you can see that there's just so much range, and you can get just the craziest stuff. There's absolutely nothing you couldn't do. You can see that a few little paint uh, flecks chipped out there, and that's something as you work the joints that you might see, but that, that's not been so significant uh, as I've been going through. So down here, I'm also wildly impressed with the different hinges. You can see that not only do you have one hinge right here, which kind of is inverted and uh, is more going forward like that and a little bit back, but there's also another hinge here at the ankle and there's a rotation at the ankle that kind of acts as a pivot, but I'm not exactly sure what's going on inside of it, but certainly enough to where if you take the legs and splay them out as much as you can, she still doesn't have any problem maintaining a pose like that. Uh, it's just, you know, nothing is supporting her or anything back here. It works. And there's plenty of range in those feet down there too. So you can get crazy stuff if you really want to. And you can get very deep poses. You can get very tall poses. I mean, you can really wild out with this thing and she shows no signs of falling over. Perfectly balanced as all action figures should be. That's what Thanos would say. Anyway, moving on to the back here, you can see that there's plenty of articulation at the tail. You have this hinge up here, this one over here, and then a bendy wire component with a rubbery section right here. And we even have a little bit of a rotation here, but that's about all I'm comfortable with because it doesn't really feel like it does much more than that. And I think it's just a result of assembly from the rubber piece to the plastic piece. Now you can also have it go way down. You can have it go way up and there's plenty of rotation as well. Now, I'm not the type of guy, uh, not the type of collector that does too much with the bendy wire stuff on these things because it kind of worries me. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably like that as well because you know as well as I do that you know you flex these bendy wires too much in this stuff and it can lead to some really unfortunate breaks and things. So you can probably go really extreme with this. Am I going to go really extreme with it? Probably not. I don't see myself doing that. But just know that if you if I really wanted to, I could probably flex this and it would hold some crazy stuff, more than likely. Now again, just comparisons are so important and you've got to understand that this is where we were just a year ago in terms of articulation. With this Rexy right here from the Legacy stuff, you had an action gimmick where you press the top of the head and you chomp like that, which was nice and it was a lot of fun and worked well. There was still plenty of motion up here and they still do that thing with the rubber piece. There was just a rotation at the arms here and a little hinge in there. But then at the legs, it was just big solid pieces that ratcheted. And down here you had one swivel at the tail. You did have a hinge and kind of a bendy portion that didn't hold anything or have a wire in it and you could rotate it 
that was it at that time. And then you take this new one and it's a whole new thing. This is on that crazy next level. Not to mention that just scale is so important to keep in mind here because this Rexy is fine for what it was, but honestly, this oh, there it is. is more of that colossal scale that we saw in the film. And you can see when we bring out a few diorama pieces, just getting that kind of power and getting that kind of scale, it just makes the difference completely, especially compared to your old version. And that kind of presence really isn't there, but this one, it is to the absolute max. Oh, there it is. And as soon as you start getting human figures, dioramas, vehicles, play sets in the background, it just really starts to get crazy. Don't believe me? Uh, look at what a little dramatic lighting can do. Huh? <laughs> and pretty soon you start to get something that's just on an entirely different level. <laughs> something that we've just never even seen before. There it is. I am so impressed with this and everything it offers. For $55, this is by far the very most premium dinosaur in 124th scale that I think you can possibly get. I think what really separates this is the level of articulation and the versatility of just what you can do with this T-Rex versus others that we've seen. I think that when we saw Mattel release the Super Colossal uh, T-Rex in the Fallen Kingdom line, something they've continued to kind of re-release as an evergreen product for years after, I think that people knew that something very different, something very unusual was going on at Mattel in terms of quality of sculpt, and people were very impressed by that. But now you've got this, and I think they've redefined once again exactly what they can do with a T-Rex. And if they continue to release dinosaurs in this sort of style and in this sort of scale, imagine getting something like a Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus. Heck, imagine even like the Indominus Rex coming out and looking like this. These, there's so many possibilities for what they can do and just what direction they can go in uh, that I'm excited definitely to see what the future holds. And I hope that whatever kind of break we have between Jurassic Park movies, that Mattel can take some time to really get some releases out in this Hammond collection and build this up and revisit some of the older movies, including the original Jurassic World, which they didn't get to visit quite as much because Hasbro did the toys and frankly, they were awful. This is truly a watershed kind of moment in Jurassic Park toys. And I just loved getting the opportunity to check Rexy out today. And I certainly hope that you guys have enjoyed the video as well. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we do new Jurassic videos all the time. And of course, we do all sorts of other toy lines, including Masters Universe here on Fanboys Forever. Also, don't forget to like the video because believe it or not, it does make a really big difference. Even your particular like, you may not think it makes, but just a flash in the pan difference, it actually makes a huge amount of difference when it comes to the algorithm and our videos actually getting out there. So we really appreciate it and it helps us to be able to make more like this. And I wish all of you luck in finding one of these. Uh, she's in demand right now. So just uh, make sure that you keep checking those e-tailers out there. That'll be the best place. And hopefully Target will be carrying quite a few of these really soon. And maybe she'll even show up at some other brick and mortar retailers pretty quick. And let me know down below in the comments uh, what you think about this new T-Rex. Is it as impressive as I'm letting on? Is it not quite what you would have done? Let me know down below what you think and if you pick this up yet or if you plan to. And as always, God bless you and yours. And I'll see you on Panboys Forever. Fanboy out. <laughs>